Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how you can create animated gradient background inside of it Film Express. So let's get started. We're going to create a new composite chart and uh, let's give it a name. Let's call this main. For the duration, I'm going to go with 10 seconds, 19, 20, 10, 80, 30 FPS. Click on OK. Then we're just going to create our background. So let's create a new plane layer and I'm going to call this PG for background and click on OK. You can just give it any color that you want. I'm going to go with this dark uh, shade of blue. Then we're just going to go back to our media. We have this background over here. Let's just drag that in. I'm going to rename this and call it shape. Then we're just going to go to effects and apply fill color on this. So search for fill color and apply it on this layer. And you can go inside the fill color and change it to any color that you want. So I'm going to just change it to something like an orange color. And with this layer selected, the shape layer, I'm going to select the ellipse tool, ellipse mask. You can just click and hold on this icon and from this list, you can select any shape that you want. I'm going to select ellipse mask. And then I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and just create a shape, ellipse shape like this. You can hold the shift and the command key on your keyboard to create a perfect ellipse like so. Once you have that, then you can select the freehand mask tool, the last icon. And you can just distort this shape. We don't want this to be a perfect ellipse. So you can just, you know, um, distort it whichever way you, that you want to. So I'm going to just leave it something like that. And I can just duplicate this shape. And we can create another layer of it. And we can just go to effects, fill color, and change it to something. Uh, change the color to something else. So let's maybe we can use this color over here. And in the mask, we can just change the position using the selection tool. You can just bring it over here. We can change the size and with the freehand mask tool, we can change its shape, something like that. Right, that looks good. Then we can duplicate these two layers, control D to duplicate. And with the selection tool, we can just, you can just go into the mask. If I just search for a mask over here, I can just select that and just bring it over here. And do the same thing with other mask as well. Just bring it over here. Now we can just distort it using the freehand mask tool, change the way it looks. And with the selection tool, I can just increase or decrease the size of it. So you just have to, you know, randomize this and just distort the shape to get a random look out of it. So maybe something like that. And you can go into the fill color. Let's type in fill color in the search and change the fill color to something else. All right, so I'm going to duplicate it one more time. So let's duplicate control D. And again, we can just search for mask and change the position. So let's just bring it over here. You can reduce the size on this one. And the second one, we can just maybe position it over here. And just bring it something like that. Um, and you can go ahead with, you know, change the color of it. So let's just do that real quick. Search for fill color and change it to a different color. And just go with a yellow color. And let's expand the second color over here and change that as well. All right. So something like that. All right. So once you are happy with this, then what you can do is let's just clear the field over here. Right, so now I'm just going to select all these shapes, hit Command M on the keyboard to just take these all the shapes into a different composite chart. I'm going to call this Comp Shapes. Click on OK. So you can see that it has created a new composite chart and all of your shapes are in this composite chart. Let's go back to our main comp where our shapes are and the background is. So what I'm going to do here is we just first of all go to Effects and apply an effect called angle blur let's apply that on the shapes composite chart expand the angle blur and i'm going to set the length to set it to maximum value which is 256 uh, we want more angle blur so i'm just going to duplicate this duplicate the angle blur and if you're happy with that you can just leave it as it is uh, but i'm just going to duplicate one more time like that and now what we are going to do is we're going to apply another effect called twist 
it's I think it's 12 not twist so yeah under distort it's 12 let's just apply on that layer and in the 12 you can expand that and expand the radius make sure it is bigger than the composite shot size and uh, then you can just play with uh, these different settings so you can change the angle and all that cool stuff and you can see we have this liquid gradient effect already there but it's static there is no animation on it so you can just you know play with the different settings you can change the position and the look of it will you know completely change the look of the the shape over here uh, so once you are satisfied with that we can just close out of this now what we have to do is we need to make sure that this empty space over here you can see the background we need to fill that in with the, this gradient so what we can do is go to our shapes comp you can see that we have this transparent area if i just go to options check about background you can see this area is transparent that is why there is nothing in this area over here it's completely blank so in order to do fix this we can just duplicate these shapes control d and just move them over here like so and you can also rotate them if you want like that and you can even go into these uh, shapes and change the colors to get uh, a different look out of it so i'm just going to duplicate it one more time and make change the position of it and even the scale you can you know change that as well so i'm just going to keep it something like that all right that is looking great so if i go to our main comp you can see the gradients have been generated in our main comp there is no empty space left over there uh, for the animation what we can do is uh, we can either create a new point layer and parent all of these shapes to that point layer and we can create a simple position animation so if i create a keyframe on position at the first frame go to the very end and i can change the position like so and you will now see the animation in your gradient over here all right so you can animate any property that you want uh, you can even animate the scale so set this to 100 at the beginning and we can just increase that to like 150 and see what happens and you can see that it works absolutely fine all right you can also if you don't want to do it this way you can also let's just delete this we can also add a new grade layer and we can apply spherical warp effect on the grade layer and we can change the spherical warp and set the amount to zero and uh, you can change the scale right you can control that and you can even rotate it if you want and uh, for the animation you can either animate the position under the center or you can just keyframe the shift texture x and just you know change the value to something different and there you go you have a different looking animation altogether well you can use the spherical warp or the new point way uh, it's completely up to you uh, you can go to your shapes as well and let's just apply a little blur on this so that we don't have these sharp edges so let's apply blur a simple blur will do and just increase the radius to like two pixels should be good enough and if you want to change the colors if you don't want to you know uh, use these colors that you have used in this uh, shapes comp you can go to your main comp and on this shape shapes composite uh, just search for hue saturation and lightness apply it on this layer and then you can just simply um, you know go into the master section of this effect and change the hue and you know you can change it to any color that you want uh, you can play around with different lightness values and uh, the saturation amount as well so there you go that's how you can create a animated gradient background inside of it film i hope this video was helpful i hope you learned something new if it did then please make sure you like the video and also subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one